Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. In this Tips and Tricks episode, I'm going to go over how to rig up one of the most productive fishing lures so that you can go trolling with it. That's right, I'm going to show you how to rig up a white bucktail jig so that you can go trolling. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Okay folks, so like I said, we're going to go over how to rig up the white bucktail jig for trolling. This bucktail jig happens to be from the company Spro, one of my favorite manufacturers of making the white bucktails. Very productive, works on everything. Everything in the ocean eats a white bucktail jig. And so I get this question a lot. You can troll a white bucktail jig? Yes, you most definitely can. And you will catch a lot with it. It's a very simple process. It's simple topwater trolling. You can catch everything from bonita. You can catch kingfish. You can catch mahi-mahi. You'll catch tuna. And occasionally you'll get hooked into a nice sailfish with one. Okay, so we're going to get into this. I'm going to show you how to rig up the white bucktail jig so that you can go trolling with it. To tie your spro jig onto your line, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need, obviously, you're going to need your white bucktail jig. This one is half ounce. You're going to need your six to seven feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. A cutting tool and you're gonna need your main line, which is attached to your reel. The first thing we're gonna do on our main line attached to our fishing reel is we're going to tie a loop called a spider hitch. To do this, I take about 12 to 16 inches and I form a loop. This is the loop end. This will be the tag end. I'm gonna pinch my line and leave about three inches of tag over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to form a loop. So I have the big end of the loop and then I have this loop that I just formed. Now I'm going to take the free end of the loop and I'm going to wrap it around my index finger and this initial loop three times. One, two, three. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the free end of this loop here and I'm going to send it back into that loop that I just made and pinched together. Then I will grab that and I will slowly pull it out, thus forming the knot called the spider hitch. Pull it slowly, pull on both ends, pull your main line against the loop, then you'll pull your tag end against the loop, and there you have it. That is a spider hitch loop. This knot, when it's done, your tag should lay flat against your main line. It should not be a perpendicular knot. If it's perpendicular, it is tied wrong and you need to start over. We are going to clip off our tag. All right, so now we've got our spider hitch tied, which is our loop and our main line. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to keep pressure on it so that we can attach our leader to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find the center of the loop by putting pressure on it with our leader, and then we're gonna attach our leader using a knot called a no-name knot. All right, so we've got pressure on our reel, which is in our rod holder, how we are going to attach our fluorocarbon leader to our spider hitch loop. The way you find the center of the loop is you will take the tag end of your fluorocarbon and you're gonna put it through your loop and you are going to just pull on it. So, when you're pulling on it, this point right here is the center of your loop. Now, 
what we're going to do is we are going to take about four to five inches of tag on your fluorocarbon leader. We're going to pinch right at the center of that loop. Now we're going to tie a no-name knot, which is essentially a reverse clinch knot. You're going to go, instead of tying it against itself, doing loops around it and sending the line back through, the line creeps up against the main line. So we're going to pull seven twists against the main line. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then we are going to send a tag back through this little loop that's been created right here on our hand where fingers are pinching the center of the loop. And then we are going to cinch down on it as if we were tying a clinch knot. That is a no-name knot right there. This is a perpendicular finished knot, which you can see. If you're not your tag is not hanging perpendicular off the knot, you've tied it wrong, you need to start over. Now you'll want to take your cutting tool and trim it off. This is a very streamlined knot and it's, a, it's very good. It goes through your guides nice and smooth if you want to cast out. So again, we've got our spider hitch knot, which is a loop. Let me open up the line and show you the loop. So we've got the spider hitch, which is a loop attached to the no-name knot. Now we're going to attach the lure, which is our half ounce white bucktail jig. We're going to attach that with a clinch knot. So we're going to put our leader through the eye of the lure right here and then we're going to do a basic clinch knot now fluorocarbon can be abrasive so i'm not going to do seven wraps i'm only going to go with six on this so one two three four five and six and then we're going to send our tag end back through that little pinched loop Grab your lure by the head and cinch down on it. Remember, a clinch knot is a 90 degree perpendicular finished knot. If you don't have that nice perfect finish, retie it. You don't want lure failure. You'll lose your lure, you'll lose your fish. Not a good day. All right, so that is how you tie that lure. All right, folks, and that is how you rig it up. It's basically the standard setup that I use for tying mono to fluorocarbon without using any swivels. Simple spider hitch to a no-name knot, about eight feet of leader, you're good to go. Tie on your lure with a basic clinch knot. You don't need a no-slip loop knot. You'd rather use a clinch knot because of the shock absorbency value in the knot. Again, these three knot combos have a lot of shock absorbency for when a fish strikes. You got your light tackle spinner that you're going to be trolling with and that will provide all the shock absorbency you need for the fish to not snap your lure off as he makes his initial run. So the next question I get is what gear do you use to troll the white bucktail jig with? Well, this is what I use. It is a Penn Spin Fisher 5500 light tackle gear made for snapper fishing but it does great and it handles the pelagic fish just fine as i said before i've handled big fish like kingfish mahi and sailfish on this light gear the rod that i have this on is a pen battalion seven foot rod rated for the 12 to 20 pound monofilament class like i said before it's got a lot of pliability in it for that shock absorbency to stop that fish and set that hook. This is light gear. No need to beef it up. We don't need conventional reels. We don't need large size spinners. We got this nice little jig. We're doing a lot of this for the sport and for the fun of fishing. This is where you're gonna really put yourself to the test and learn to control how fast you're retrieving your fish, knowing when the fish needs to take a run, 
when to put the heat on and when the fish has had enough and it's time to make that final haul in. And the last tip I want to give you when it comes to trolling a white bucktail jig. You don't need to just let it out in the water and start letting out line. You can actually take it and cast it out. It's on a lightweight spinner. Cast it out. Get it out 100 feet behind your boat. That way you just got to let out about 50 or 75 more feet or so. You're good to go. You're not going to want to troll this thing 300 feet back behind a boat. At max, you know, 150, 175 feet. You might even want to bring it in a little bit closer and troll it right behind the whitewash of your boat. So once you get it in the water, you're going to get up to speed. You're going to want to troll about six to seven knots with this so that you can make the fish chase it down and they can get that impulse strike going on. Remember, trolling is all about enticing and actively hunting fish to act upon the impulse to feed. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. And I hope you learned a little bit about how to rig up the white bucktail jig for trolling. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.